Hello. In this session, I will be discussing the host firewall feature of Cortex XDR. The host firewall enables you to control communications on your endpoints. It allows the user to create rules to block and allow traffic and to apply them onto endpoints using policy rules. Cortex XDR leverages operating system firewall APIs to establish these rules as well. I'll be covering prerequisites to getting started using the host firewall, along with a live demo demonstrating its capabilities. First, the host firewall is only available for Windows and Mac OS operating systems. For Windows, an XDR agent of 7.1 or later is required. It's also recommended to disable the Windows firewall and endpoints running Windows 7 SP1. For Mac, a Cortex XDR agent of 7.2 or later is required. The Cortex XDR host firewall rules can only apply to incoming communications on the endpoint. It's also important to note that after you disable or remove the Cortex XDR host firewall policies on Mac OS endpoints, the system firewall and the endpoint will be disabled. There are also a couple configuration limitations as well. One, automatically allowing built-in software to receive incoming connections is enabled to be initiated, as well as two, automatically allowing downloaded signed software to receive incoming connections. To create a host firewall after following the prerequisites, there are a few steps the user needs to follow in order to get set up. A new host firewall rule needs to be created in the host firewall rules group. From the Cortex XDR main menu, we can navigate to endpoints and then click on host firewall. Here, we are able to view and create all host firewall groups. The host firewall rule groups are reusable rule sets that can be used as pieces to build our host firewall profile, which can then be assigned to a subset of endpoints in our extended policy. For example, I can add the block Google internal rule, the allow list for demo lab, and the print block all in one individual profile, which can then be added to a subset of endpoints on our policy. This could be done uh, the same for block Google external and the block list as well. It's all mix and match. After the creation of a host firewall rule group, we are then able to assign the group to a host firewall profile. When the user edits these groups from this menu, the changes take effect in all the policies it is included in. By clicking on the drop down arrow, we are able to view additional information for each rule group along with how it is configured along with what profile that rule group is assigned to. By right-clicking the rule group as well, we are also able to edit, save, stable, delete, export, and import the group's rules as well. On the host firewall events tab, we can see instances of any established host firewall group taking action. This includes individual allowances or blocks. On the top right, we can export the information listed here, refresh, filter, and adjust the view of the logs listed here. If we right click on an individual event in this section, we can see that we have the option to collect detailed host firewall logs, along with the ability to view rule data. Cortex XDR Pro customers can also query the host firewall events using host firewall events dataset in the XQL search for further monitoring. Now that we have an overview of the host firewall configuration, let's create a new rule to demonstrate the creation process and functionality. At the moment, I'm running a Windows 10 virtual machine, and I will demonstrate how the host firewall feature can be used to block traffic, in particular from IP addresses. On the left terminal, I'll be running a continuous ping that will eventually be blocked by the firewall I create. This is currently pinging uh, Google's DNS servers at 8.8.4.4. And on the right terminal, I'm going to be using Telnet for my example. I'll be attempting to read information from a Telnet connection to 1.1.1.1 on port 80. Uh, and I'm going to read the following like this, and I can just hit enter. And then I get this uh, HTTP request back, which means the connection did initiate. Now we'll create some host firewall rules to block these connection attempts. Starting at the host firewall rules groups page, I can now select new group to begin working on my rules. On the top, we'll see the general information about the rule. I'll call the name ping plus telnet block. 
I could leave a description if I want, and I can choose the mode it will be created in, being enabled or disabled. Here, I can add my firewall rules at the top right. Here, we can set up all the logistics of our new allow slash block. I'll first start with blocking the ping to the Google DNS server. I'll call the rule ping block. And this will be on my Windows virtual machine, so I can uncheck my OS. The protocol will be ICMP. The direction will be outbound connections, and I am looking to block that action. Since it's a remote DNS server I'm attempting to ping, I'll type the address in the remote, the remote section being 8.8.4.4. Below here are some additional application service settings I can apply to my block, and I'll leave these settings alone. Finally, at the bottom, we can report matched traffic to the host firewall events tab that I mentioned previously, and I'll also leave that disabled for my example. And we'll be creating an additional rule for the telnet block as well. I'll call that telnet block. Keep it at Windows. The protocol will be any block. It will be towards 1.1.1.1. And I'll leave these settings alone as well. We're also able to change the ordering of the rules. When traffic is evaluated through the firewall, it will go through the rules in whatever numer numerical order that we establish it as. And if none of the rules match, it will by default go to our baseline rule being allow or block. Since order doesn't matter for my particular example, I'll leave the ordering alone and I can just go ahead and click on create. And at the top right, we can see that our group was created successfully and we can see it at the top right over here. Now I can head over to policy management and click on the profiles under extensions right over here. I can add a new profile to include the rules that I made. If I click on Add Profile and then Creating New, it'll be on Windows, and I can click on Host Firewall. At the top, I can enter general information about my profile. I'll call the name Host FW. Below the general information, I'm able to choose to override instances of blocks and have the ability to view it in the Host Firewall Events tab that we discussed previously. And at the bottom here, we have internal and external rule groups. When network location configuration is enabled in the agent settings profile, these host firewall rules will activate based on the current location of device, whether it is within the internal network of the company or whether the device is outside of the office. Depending on its location, it will enforce these different rules. Since my device is outside of the network, I'll add it to the external rule group. I'm clicking on add group and selecting on the ping plus telnet block that I created. After the rule group is added, we can drag up and down the order of activation for each rule by dragging on these arrows, allowing them to be initiated in numerical order. And we can also see additional descriptive information on the rule group that we added. Finally, at the bottom, we're also able to set a default action for our rule group. Rules will follow these default actions if none of the rules we create match it. After everything looks good in the external rule group menu, I can go ahead and click on create. And we can see at the top right that our prof profile was successfully created. Once the profile is created, I can finally create my new policy, including the rules that I made go over to the policy rules under extensions and select add policy create new and here we can see the policy creation menu i'll call my policy name test fw example select my platform as windows and we can see the host firewall selection drop down over here i can select it and select the test FW that I created as my profile and then hit next. And then I will get a warning that I am changing the host firewall profile to a non-default one. And I can just select agree and okay. 
here, I can select my target endpoint so I can filter for a particular name and select the name of the host that I'm using. Please keep in mind that you're also able to select a subset of endpoints on this menu as well by going off of the filter. But since we're just doing it to my endpoint specifically, I can just click on the box to the left, select next, and everything the summary looks good, and I can just click on done. And then I will also be prompted to save an unsaved policy change that I just created, and I could just click on save. And finally, the policy rule for my endpoint was successfully updated, and we can see that new policy on the top. Back on the endpoint side, on the left, we can see that my reoccurring ping turned into a general failure rather than a reply. And on the right, if I attempt to telnet back into 1.1.1.1 on port 80, we can see that I get the connection failed error. In the host firewall, we examined how the user is able to configure host-based firewall rules and endpoints utilizing the host firewall rule groups, extended profiles, and extended policies. We also went through an overview of what the setup process of firewall rules could look like. For more information about the host firewall or other features of Cortex XDR, please check out our other how-to videos along with the documentation. Thank you and have a great day.